get away. Thank you. Okay, better stand over here so you can hear me. Is this working? It's good. Okay, so I'm going to give a short talk, um, basically a story about Angular and the CSP. So we're going to talk a little bit about love at first sight, some compromises, frustrations you may have, unfaithfulness and reconciliation. First off, uh, just introduce myself. My name is David Johansson. I work for Synopsys. I've been working as a security consultant for about 10 years and uh, helping clients with basically designing and building secure software. Uh, and also developing and delivering various security trainings. And uh, I live in London now, just about three years back. Uh, originally, I'm from Sweden. Let me start by introducing the main characters of the story. So first we have our hero, Angler, and I'm gonna talk about Angler version one mainly today. And uh, I guess you're most familiar with Angular, but basically it's a client-side framework uh, built in JavaScript. Uh, that's very popular for building uh, single page applications. And uh, it's a very um, widespread language uh, for the client side and it's uh, maintained by Google. It's an open source project and it has a lot of good stuff in it in terms of security. They build it with security in mind. So now that you have your client side application built on Angular, you might want to look at other ways to increase security of your application. So you may consider the other character here, the content security policy. So a content security policy is a client-side security um, feature that specifies various constraints, so to say, for the browser on how to handle content. So you can put constraints on uh, how scripts are executing, where they're executing from, and also other types of content. And the main use case for it has traditionally been to try to mitigate cross-scripting attacks. So the purpose is, if you have some kind of content injection into your application, uh, the content security policy should be there as a defense in depth and try to prevent that from executing any code. So when you add these two things together, it was love at first sight. So they basically just worked together. And Angular was designed to work with these kind of security features. So uh, the content security policy has a couple of things that can normally break applications. You have things like the unsafe inline directive that you need to add if you have script mixed with your code, with your, sorry, mixed with your HTML templates. So the CSP by default um, doesn't allow you to do that because that's how if you inject content and that can execute a script, it would run uh, cross scripting attacks, for example. Uh, the other thing that it doesn't like is if you have, um, uh, um, if you execute code dynamically, if you create dynamic code from eval or new function similar, so by default, unless you have unsafe eval uh, allowed in your CSP, then um, it won't run with frameworks that would use eval. If we look at Angular though, it actually works quite well because it doesn't need to have uh, unsafe inline specified. So typically if you have inline event handles like this, the CSP wouldn't like that. And you would need to add unsafe inline to run it. So what you would have to do instead would be something like this to add an event listener to it. And um, that's good practice, but as a developer, it can be a bit cumbersome and difficult to do, and it's um, a little bit less convenient than just writing your event handler directly. So what Angular does is instead of doing this, it provides um, custom extensions to the HTML template. So you can use things like ng-click instead of on-click. So instead of adding these event handlers, you can do things like this. So you have the ng-click, and then you can write an expression that will evaluate. So what happens here is that after being bootstrapped, Angular will pass to HTML, and then it will uh, look at these um, uh, events handlers that you've added with a special um, uh, extensions in Angular, and it will pass that and execute that code for you. The next thing is unsafe eval. So by default, uh, the CSP does not allow that. And in Angular, what it does is it's actually using eval when it's parsing expressions but it also has a fallback mechanism. So by default, when you start Angular, what it does is trying to see if it's allowed to execute code dynamically uh, in terms of like creating a new, um, new function based on a string. So what it does here is it's trying to do that and then it's capturing whether it was um, possible to do or if it throws an error, it will return uh, true that is uh, not allowed to use an unsafe eval. 
And that's then used in the parser. So when the parser is running, it will look at this um, from the initial time, and then it will start to use an interpreter instead of compilation. So if it's found out that it's not allowed to compile these, it will run an interpreter instead. So that's all good. Problem is that interpreting code is, of course, a little bit slower than compiling it. So once you have added a CSP to your Angular application, you may find that it's a little bit slower to parse these expressions. So it feels a little bit held back by the CSP. <coughs> Other things may actually break. So these two guys, ng-cloak and ng-hide, they may think that they are hidden, but in fact they're not. The reason is, if you look at this, the way they work is that when you specify uh, ng-hide, for example, uh, it's an instruction to uh, have a conditional hiding of that element. So if you have an expression value to true, it should hide the element, but if it's valid to false, it should not. And the way it works is, if you look at the code here, is that when it's set to true, it's injected a class ng-hide here. But when we look at the page, it's not hidden. So what's gone wrong here? Well, the problem here is that what Angular tries to do is that it tries to inject an inline style. And if your CSP doesn't allow inline styles, this will fail. And it will also trigger errors in the CSP. So we have these issues with both something's breaking, something's being slower, and also generating these errors. And that can be kind of annoying, especially if you're uh, capturing CSP violations, you will get a lot of noise in your Angular application. So how can we fix this? So to try to make this work again and overcome these differences, you can tell Angular explicitly to uh, obey the CSP, so to say. So there is a um, directive called ng-csp, and it has a couple of different configurations. In its default configuration, it deactivates both the use of inline uh, styles and unsafe eval by default. So that's a safe choice if you don't need them. You can also explicitly specify which one you want to uh, allow or prevent. So you can explicitly state like no inline style or no unsafe eval. The other thing you need to do is to make sure this ng-cloak and ng-hide works properly by manually including a CSS file. So if you can't inject these styles um, from Angular dynamically, what you can do is you can load this file and you include a style sheet uh, file instead into your HTML templates wherever you need to use ng-cloak and ng-hide. And that will then automatically fix these issues. So now it starts to look good again. We've overcome some of these difficulties and they seem to run happily. But then Angular starts cheating a bit on the CSP. So remember the purpose of the CSP was to prevent code execution. So if we have some kind of content injection, it shouldn't be possible to get some uh, JavaScript code to run. So there have been reported many different types of CSP bypasses uh, based on Angular and for different versions. And there's also been cases where you've been able to downgrade Angular version to when they fix some of these to run the previous version and then exploit that. Uh, but here's one that works on the latest version as well. So what we do here is that let's assume that this part of content in the box has been injected. So there's a content injection issue here. Normally, the CSP would prevent you from executing any code with that. But because Angular here is whitelisted, we can inject some code that's then parsed by Angular. And by abusing that, we can make Angular run the code for us. And Angular is, of course, whitelisted. So if we run this uh, on this page here uh, from uh, CDRCAT, um, we can see that it's executing when we uh, have this full element in focus. Because what happens is that it fires an event, and in that event, um, we get a handle to uh, the window where we can call alert on that. So we see that it's running, which is not really what we wanted to happen. With all these issues, you may wonder, <coughs> is it time to file for the wars? What's the point of having a CSP with an Angular application? Because first of all, it slows down Angular a bit. Uh, expressions will take a bit longer to interpret instead of compiling. Um, some things may even break, like the ng-cloak and ng-hide, as we saw before. And some scripting may still be possible because of Angular's way of parsing content and executing code on your behalf. So what's the point? Should we use it? 
Well, before you decide not to use the CSP with Angle, I would uh, encourage you to think through some things. First of all, I don't think these issues are too big to overcome. Um, in terms of the performance issue, I would suggest that you actually try to run your application and try to measure the hit in performance. Uh, most cases, I would think it's not too bad and you would get by with using CSP without too much impact. The other types of issues we have with ng-cloak and ng-hide, we can fix them. So you just need to include this style sheet file instead. So it's not really a reason not to use the CSP. I also want to point out that I still think the CSP can help you make your application harder to attack. So even though there are some bypass and some ways to execute some code, it makes it much harder to produce a full working exploit. And I think that by using a CSP, we get the benefit of that as well as the CSP provides additional features, like if you're using CSP level two and upcoming level three, it provides additional constraints you can use in terms of uh, things like framing, form actions, and plugins and on. So it, it does have a lot of value. So what I would want to say with this is that despite all of this um, value that CSP provides, it should be known as defense in depth mechanism. It's not an excuse for bad code. So when you have Angular, write your code properly and then add CSP as an extra layer of defense. In case there would be some issues with your code, it may just save you. Okay, that was the end of this short talk. Uh, any questions? Yes? So, why do you think adding CSP to an Angular application makes exploitation harder? Because the known vectors are using either the AngularJS samples bypasses or even in the Angular post 1.6 without needing the, the, the sample breakouts. Um, are just as easy as the regular script injections. Yeah, so I think um, if you're not allowing a valve, for example, you can't, some of the, the previous uh, summit escapes and things like that, um, if you run them, they, they won't work. And if you, um, you can still call some functions, you can call some functions on, on the window object, for example, but it makes it harder to to write a, a proper working exploit. Uh, I'm not saying that it's possible. I'm not saying that it's, um, there's no way of getting around it, but um, it makes it more difficult to write arbitrary code because you can't um, just inject it and use a value similar to so execute that code. the assumption is that you can only, I mean, assume an injection somewhat could be mm. It's just that you have, you can call a single function with a couple of parameters. Yeah. And this is what's stopping. Yeah, it's making it hard. I wouldn't say that it completely stops it. Um, I haven't tried to write a full one uh, as proof of concept for that, but it's it definitely makes it, uh, I think, harder to do because you would need to chain a lot of these together. And also a performance question. Mm -hmm. uh, that, is there any benchmarking actually done on the performance? So according to the Angular documentation itself, it says that it's speeds up performance about 30% in evaluating expressions with using a compile instead of interpreting it. Um, so it, it has some impact, but it depends how much you are, how many expressions you're validating in your application. And, and also one thing to note here is that this is running on the client side, right? So it's affecting like one user. If you have a performance impact on the server side, um, it will reduce how many users you can serve on, on the same type of um, hardware, so to say. But here is just one client that's affecting, so I think the impact um, is less in this case. And also on the browsers, right? Because there's a lot of conversation about Chrome 57, 58, and upcoming 59, which is due to be released soon. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of differences there uh, in areas um, around JavaScript. And uh, is there anything that you know that uh, is going to get better or worse? Which was in no. Uh, With regards to <laughs> CSP and Angular? Um, no, not that I'm familiar with it. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to be around here and you can grab me afterwards if you have any additional questions and I'm happy to discuss those. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.